In this video, I would like to introduce you one of the simplest user interface for stable diffusion, which is called uh, Focus. I will show you how to run it using Google Collab and also using a GPU locally if you have one. Stay with me. First, let, let me show you how to run it using the Google Collab. So if you go to their homepage, you scroll down to uh, the Collab section here. And you can open it in Collab. So it's quite simple. It only have like a five line of code. It will create a share, like a shared URL that you can like access to try the UI. So let's uh, let's just click run to do it. There's a warning, but uh, we can click uh, wrong anyway. Yeah, as you can see right now, it's uh, downloading the model file. The speed is uh, around uh, 250 megabytes per second. Okay, we see that uh, there's several link being created. One is the local URL, the other one is the public URL. So we would uh, open the public URL, open it on another tab, press enter. Wow, we see our like familiar user interface, the gradient interface. So, um, and we can also keep an eye on the collab, the terminal, some information about it. You can also check the monitoring for the RAM, for VRAM, <coughs> and for the disk. Yeah, we can quickly give it a try here. We can like enter race car and click uh, generate. So I think the simplest uh, way you <laughs> would like to do is just enter an um, object. So the purpose of the project is to simplify your prompts. So you don't need to enter like uh, 50 or even hundreds of prompt words. The idea is that even you put the simplest uh, prompt it can generate a beautiful image. So, and of course, there's also like advanced option here. So, in the advanced option, there are several tab. On the first one, you can choose uh, between speed or quality. So, if you choose quality, it took like a longer time. It will take like take a longer time. Then there's the, the ratio of the image. So in this case, I will choose the default, <coughs> and there's the image number. You can choose uh, mini like maximum thirty two or minimum one. So let's uh, let's choose uh, two. And there's some negative prompt if you want to use that. For the seed, we see that uh, the random one got picked up. Okay, and then there's a second type is the style. So there are quite uh, many of the styles that you can choose from. I think that's good. We see that uh, there's multiple model here, the different uh, style. Yeah, I will leave you to experiment with them. The third tab is called uh, advanced. So in this case, you would uh, be able to use uh, some of the advanced features like uh, choose the model, choose the refiner. You can choose uh, or apply the loggers. So if you are not familiar with the loggers, 
which is uh, the fine-tuned model. So for example, you can fine-tune the base model with some particular face. So that way the model can remember the face of some famous people. So I think that's a great feature for stable diffusion, which means uh, automate customization. All right. Uh, we see that, so, so right now we, I will just accept the default features and then I'll click uh, generate. We see there's a progress bar showed up and uh, because the stable diffusion XL model took a longer time usually, so we need to be a little bit patient. Meanwhile, let's check the console. We do see that the speed is about 1.1 .1 iteration per second. It took 26 seconds to generate the one of the image. We also see the GPU VRAM usage is about close to 99%. All right, we, we see that uh, it generated uh, two of the image for race car. I think uh, they, they do look uh, quite uh, nice. Mm, and uh, consider that we only input a uh, two word like race car. So imagine that like, uh, in, in normal stable diffusion, you would need uh, to provide a uh, lot of description words like the color of the car, the effect, the like some details like the sky, like the race condition, and etc. This is the second one. Yeah, I think they look quite nice. What do you think? Uh, okay. Yeah, I think it works. Uh, Flawlessly, I'm glad to see that. Secondly, let's uh, take a look at. Uh, uh, maybe we can try another. Try some of the style. Okay, we see. Yeah, let's let's uh, let's look at the photography for food, and we put. Uh, um, ham burgers. Okay, because I like hamburgers. <laughs> okay, and uh, let's click uh, generate. Oh no, we had our own issue. So let's uh, I think it's based because of the VRAM issue, so that's unfortunately. But uh, yeah, don't worry because uh, like uh, we we only uh, like picked a very like easy simple word, so we can simply remember that, right? So it's not like we have like hundreds of words to remember. And uh, let's just do a do a refresh and uh, restart. Another URL, we can try to access that one. Great, and then we enter the hamburgers, click the advanced, click the style tab, we choose the food photography, and press generate. All right, we see that uh, just successfully generated uh, two of the images. I would say I am amazed. It's like it looks wonderful. <laughs> I it's like a look looks like something I would like to buy. So 
first one, the second one. Yeah, I think uh, there's there's great potential. Yeah, I think so many styles to try, and you only need to click uh, like two or three times, right? So I'm really think uh, this is uh, like a great uh, experiment project to try, and I think it's really easy to to try it. I think. Uh, as long as you have a Google account, you can try it online. And uh, next, let's uh, switch gear to run it uh, locally using a media GPU. So the installation is quite uh, straightforward. So if you go to the home page, scroll down to the Linux part. So you can see there are several lines of code so that's all you need so i have done that so you first uh, you need to get a clone the repository and then you change your directory to that so next you would need to create a virtual environment using an anaconda And after that, you can activate your virtual environment. So th this is just uh, uh, yeah. the name of the EMV, all right? And after that, you would uh, need to people install the requirements. Okay, let me see, requirements. And you, as you can see, there are multiple packages that uh, would need to be installed. So, all right. So as I already done that, I will quickly show you my final environment and uh, launch the application. Okay, okay. And also one thing I want to mention is that uh, the version of the Python needed to be at least uh, 3.10 because I already, already tested 3.9, it seems it doesn't work, or 3.8. So you, if you have an older virtual environment, unfortunately, you, you would need to use a new one. Okay, so, so in this case, I have activated my created uh, Conda virtual environment, and uh, the only thing next I would need to do is to um, to do a Python launch, and also I forgot to mention that you would need to download uh, several um, model files. So I think uh, it uh, was specified in the readme, so you would need to download the base model and uh, the refiner model, put those into the directory on the models, on the checkpoints. So as you can see here, you would need to download the two model files locally here. Okay, and then the only thing you need to do is to do a Python launch.py. Okay. Okay, we see that uh, it automatically opened uh, one of the local URL. At the same time, I would like to open a monitoring dashboard so we can take a look at uh, what's being used for the GPU. So my GPU here is um, NVIDIA Sodi 60, which has 12 gigabytes of VRAM, the maximum power usage, is 170 watts and uh, and it also included the system CPU and uh, the memory okay so so we, we can see that at the terminal it, there's some information being printed out yeah take a look at it I think it's very interesting <laughs> okay and uh, let's go move on to the uh, user interface I think I already did the 
um, introduction earlier. So I think uh, in local, you have more freedom. It seems like uh, during the collab run, it can get interrupted like after each run. So you had to restart, but uh, on local, as you can see, it uh, can run like fairly smoothly. So I prefer to run it uh, locally. Okay, and uh, let's uh, take a look at uh, some of the example here. Uh, we can also try, for this case, I will change it to one. So I will generate one image at a time. So uh, we focus on the speed. We also have the dimension. We Let's choose the style. We can choose uh, uh, like, uh, um, we can choose real state, real estate. Let's see. Beach house. Yeah, and uh, press generate. Yeah, and this is the GPU monitoring. We see that it uses about uh, six gigabytes of VRAM. GPU utilization is at uh, 100%. Power watts, almost 90%. Well, cool, it's already generated that. Right, so we see that uh, it uh, looks uh, pretty. So let's uh, create uh, another one. Mansion, okay. New part. All right. Yeah, we, we see that it looks uh, quite nice. It indeed draw the one of the mansion. Okay, so um, yeah, yeah. I think uh, I highly recommend uh, you to give it a try. I think it's a uh, it's really there's uh, so many predefined uh, styles that you can experiment with. I, because I don't have many like too much time to try every one of them, but I encourage you to try them and uh, share with uh, us. Okay, let me know if you have any question. So before we end uh, this video, I want to mention that uh, I also tried to use the AMD GPU to run this application. Unfortunately, I tried uh, like both PyTorch one or PyTorch two. It's uh, seems not uh, working so far. So I think uh, there are also some issues being raised in the GitHub. Uh, I think the authors are aware of it and I hope them can provide a support for AMD GPU. So for now, for AMD GPU users, yeah, please use the Google Collab. I think uh, it's also easy to use. And uh, let's uh, hope that uh, AMD support can be provided soon. Okay, thank you very much. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Please uh, subscribe to my channel. I really need your support. Bye-bye.